Oh, I should probably change the game stuff though in chat. Sort page. Copy. Oh, hello. Switching up dashboard real quick. Okay, this is early access game. Only contains the first three levels. The final game will have hours and hours of branching content. Probably fill your SSD. Throughout development of Not For Broadcast, uh, we will receive changes, updates, graphics, footage, music, UI, stuff, all, all the stuff, basically. And if if you have feedback, we'd love to hear from you. We intend to change the shape of the game, view of the minds. Please talk to us on our Steam forums. Please, please, please get help talk to us. Um, yes, we also accept bribes. Finally, a sincere thank you to all those that are buying this game. Heads up, I did not buy this. The game was provided to me by Tiny Build. Tiny Build, they're just publishers. Keep in mind, they're just publishers. Just publishers. That's it. Mm. Daddy, Daddy. Okay. That's set there. Bam. Okay. Uh, unless you pirate it, in which case we hope that you enjoyed it. Now to end up buying it, uh, if we can't finish the game without people paying for it, and our poor coders uh, start looking money hungry. Okay. Let's check out the options. Game. Looking all pretty hot. Graphics. All very hot. Very cool. Backup. New game. Enter game name. Um, my glasses are foggy gameplay. It's gonna go with that. What was our a game enter game name? Okay, let's see what what suggestions do you have chat uh morag quack game name to game to ducky oh i didn't switch the emotes over damn uh i'm gonna go with quack quack former prime minister jacob hamilton man called an election after what It's already gotten got meta. Screens. The one on the right is the broadcast screen. That's what the viewers are seeing at home. It's only a couple of seconds behind the master screen there in the middle. That's the one you control. Now the four small screens on the left show the different signals coming from the studio. And you can choose between them using the numbered buttons on the vision mixer at the bottom left. Don't worry. I'll talk you through it and you'll oh, pick it up no. in no time. Now, have a look to your left. These plugs control everything in the studio. I've left them set up for you, so provided you haven't fiddled with them, all you have to do now is throw the master trip switch and we're in business. Once you've got the power on, face the front again. I don't know fans. The broadcast screen that we're in the end titles for the show before us. Fortunately, they go on for fucking ages, so there's plenty of time for me to explain. <laughs> oh, right, okay, they're over, so we haven't got long now till the broadcast. <laughs> right, quickly, mate, look down under the desk. You can see a load of videotapes on the left. They're your adverts. Pick any three and load them into the machines on the right. When you've done that, look up to the front again. Take on four old ladies from East Grinchel. That's followed at 8pm by award-winning documentary series, The Shape of Man, which tonight looks at the history of the knee-length sock. And it you should be getting a signal from the studio soon. Not one to miss. At 9pm, sit back and relax with multiple award-winning movies. The freedom when you get the signal, select 
next green one with the vision mixer and we're ready to go. Oh, Corn and mayonnaise? Mm. You know seafood makes me go out with pastures. Yeah, I thought it might increase our viewing figures. Every day. You offer me prawns every day. Ten seconds, everybody. Tower show love. You're trying to kill it. And yet you persist. Going in five, four. But now. It's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening. Our main story is tonight. Okay, we're all good. good. Next is going to be the throw of the news titles on screen too. There'll be a countdown, but I'll count you in as well. Just relax, mate. It's all gravy. Buys Honest Andy's totally independent and corners the flawed market. Top chat. Wait, what? Sports fans oh. ever celebrate as popular footballer Johnny Hamsley's win sports fans. And a spoonful of sugar. <laughs> Megan will be chatting with movie star Lauren Press the wrong button. Patch about his new movie, The Medicated. And, of course, we'll be going live to advance headquarters to ah. the leaders of this fledgling party have to say on their historic. Right. Button That's two, what's coming up on tonight. Three, National two, one. National Lovely mate. Next thing is to throw back to Jeremy with button one when that globe in the middle shrinks down and vanishes. This, this is what I normally do for streaming, right? Here it comes. Switch to screen one. Now. Lovely mate. But first, the votes are in and it's a decisive win for advance. <laughs> The last time, listen, mate, we often get a bit of interference this? around this time of night, so keep your eye on the machine on the bottom right. You can move that white door up and down, avoiding the interference. Using Are they the saying that I got to I got to play, uh, I got to play like Flappy Bird? Deliberately vague. The opposition parties have all considered defeat. I got to play Flappy Bird while I'm trying to like do stuff. Right, it's going well. All you've got to do now is play the advert at the end of the segment. Make sure you don't play it too early or we'll all get fired. Now the clock at the top is counting you down to the advert. When it reaches zero, press one of the three play ad buttons over there at the bottom right. I normally play the first one at the first break and so on, but you can play them in any order you want. I'll play count you into it as well, but keep your eye on the clock. This has a lot more production value. And three, two... One advert. One minute back, everybody. Jeremy, I need you to fill out the ads. What? Why? Wanker Snatch is running late. Oh. I thought I'd ask him about the election. Personally, I wouldn't try to confuse him with any big words. Hmm, that's the same policy we use with you. I thought that was our little secret. He doesn't remember anything I tell him. <laughs> I'm deeply uncomfortable with your burgeoning friendship. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Wicked. We made it to the first ad break. You're doing great, mate. But this is where it starts getting a bit trickier. This next sequence is what we It would have been funny if, if I would have thrown them on screen. I wonder what would have happened. multiple cameras to keep things interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of it's down to personal taste, but here's three good rules of thumb. One, try and keep the shot on whoever is doing the mm -hmm. talking. Two, don't stay on the same shot for too long. Ten seconds at the most. Ten seconds? So if you're on the person who's talking, try and throw in the odd reaction shot or pull out to the wide shot for a bit just to keep it interesting. Three, don't uh -oh. stay on reaction shots for too long. A couple of seconds is usually enough. Then the audience want to see who's doing the talking, yeah? Stick to these rules and you'll be fine. It's not as complicated as it sounds. You've seen programs on television, haven't you? Make it look like those. I wait, wait. We'll get screen one selected now. No need to wait for the broadcast to start. Try and stay ahead, mate. Quiet in the studio. Thank you so much. Ten seconds, everybody. Oh, I didn't have to do this part this time. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. To Later, the we'll be hearing from shock election winners Later, advance. But first, our ready to go to Megan on screen four. Megan Wolf is here with a star of both stage and screen. Megan? Thank you, Jeremy. Megan Wolf, culture correspondent. And today, I have a guest who starred in everything from Shakespeare to Right, go to Blunderclatch on screen three when she says his name. By none other than Lawrence Blunderclatch. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my dear. I do hope you believe me when I tell you that being with you here today is a moment. Switch to two for the 
right now. I heard a beach to it. May I say having you here with us is among ours. <laughs> right now, just try and stay on whoever's talking. The latest movie, which is called The Medicated. The Medicated, yes. <laughs> wow, what was that like? Yes. Well, as I said to easy. Peter, the rat. It's super easy. Peter Jensen, the director. Give us a look at Megan's reaction. Lovely. Guy. Now back to Thunder Twat. Worked with Thunder Twat. Movies, all terribly successful. I said to Peter, what a wild ride this has been. What a wild ride. And you know what, Megan? I really meant that. Wow, that is fantastic. And am I right in saying that the character you play in this movie right is quite an academic one? Absolutely right. A scientist. Absolutely Was that a challenge a at all? What exactly that wasn't very good. Right? But seriously, yes, you're right. But it was a complete yes. departure from my last starring role when I played Sergeant Rock Rockman in Bullet Rock Man. Rock Bullet Man. You'll remember that that was the true story of one soldier's fight for a love that surpasses all others. A love, of course, for freedom. Remember the 10 second rule? Yes, screw your 10 second rule. Let's see who's counting. <laughs> It's a role that's where you speak to Best Actor Awards, if I remember correctly. It's so sweet of you to mention it, but I really am not in it for the awards, although... I think it is every 10 seconds, yeah. statues do take pride of place on my mantle. Uh, I don't know. I've been watching like, real broadcast television so for a long ass time. doing it for the awards, mm. what is it then that drives you? Oh, that is a beautiful question, Megan. And not mm -hmm. easy to answer. Like you, like you, I'm afraid. Cut me, and I will bleed. And often, that's how it feels, doesn't it? That's how it feels. doesn't it? Bleeding. Yeah. Uh -huh. Giving. <laughs> the action for one's audience. I suppose in the end, I do it for the people. I do it for the people that I inspire. I do it for the people. The little people. The little people. But most of all, I think I do it for the positive change that I can bring about in the world. And today, of course, uh, we're in for some real change, it looks like, in the coming few months. What do you make of this historic election result? Oh, well, <laughs> well, now you're asking. Historic election result, indeed. Historic is the word. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? Very difficult. I think I've always been quite clear that when it comes to politics, that one should always strive to strive not fuck things up. Shit, he swore. Oh. Oh, oh, well, don't worry, he won't do it again. Sorry, I said fuck. Shit, he did it again. Okay, don't panic. I'll explain how to deal with swearing at the break. The medicated, which opens next week. Right, I've swapped the shot of Jeremy on screen one for a VT of the movie clip. You'll get a countdown on the screen, but I'll just let Megan cue you in. My character, Dr. Lance Hemlock, is faced with a decision that could affect humanity's very survival. Exciting stuff. Let's take a look. Exciting stuff. Oh my god, I gotta Watch play thing over mate. here too? What the hell is this? Oh, she's so angry already. <laughs> she's so done with the, with this with his guest. Playing a little bit of Flappy Bird, don't worry. The sterility. This phone letter. This phone letter. This is the key. I wonder if I can use spacebar for sensor, maybe. You'll want to play another ad. Remember to use the clock at the top to count you in. If we should. The hell is that sound effect? Medicated. Right, I'll 
guess I better explain how to deal with bleeping out swear words. Yes. As you've probably noticed, the broadcast screen here is about two seconds behind the master screen here. When someone says a naughty word, the bleep button lights up like this. Two seconds later, you'll hear that swear word going out on the broadcast, and you need to hold down the bleep button or the space bar on your keyboard okay, good. for as space long works. as the swear word lasts. It can take a bit of practice getting used to hearing two things at once. Just stay calm and you'll get it. And if you can't tell when to bleep, just above the button, you'll literally be able to see the sound scrolling by. All you've got to do is hold it down while the red bit is over the red line. Oh, Simple. it's all visual. Of course, if you do it by eye, you'll have to take your eye off the screens. That's why real professionals do it by ear. Most people like to have the volume of the broadcast screen a little bit below the master screen. Let's set it now. As you turn it up, you'll hear the advert getting louder. Set to start censoring. Like I said, it's a little practice, but I'll try and help you through it, and soon we'll have you bleeping like a pro. Remember, button lights up, count one, two, and hold it down. We got those shares. You want crazy? We got crazy. Crazy Neil's got crazy deals. Remember to select screen one now that you've got the feed. Don't wait for the broadcast to go live. That's too late. You can use the number buttons on your keyboard, one to four. Seriously, we've had worse. Five, four, three. Welcome back. And I'm told we can now go Welcome live back. to advance headquarters where the two leaders, Peter Clement and Julia Salisbury, are about to make their acceptance address. Are about to make their acceptance address. Cut to the outside broadcast. Oh, oh shit, for it, Pat. Get ready okay. to leave. Oh, well, uh, thank you all for coming. And, well, thank you all where do coming. I start? Well, what a day. They said we couldn't do it. They certainly did. They used every dirty, low-down, lying, southern bastard trick they had against us. For you, long. I'm sorry about the language there. Sorry, sorry about that. I've had a couple of celebratory sorry pints. It makes me coarser than the grand is funny. Memory <laughs> 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 put. <laughs> but to be honest, who can blame Peter for <laughs> celebrating? Who can blame Peter throughout the campaign? Oh. They say that advance are not a political party. A party is what you have when things are going well. When the country is suffering, you don't need a party. It's all good. You don't worry. A team. a team that can change things. But today is day one of a new future. A better, fairer future. So perhaps we should all be celebrating. Except for the rich. For them, the party's over. They shouldn't be celebrating. They should be putting their shitting pants on and opening their dusty checkbook. Again, colourfully put, but not inaccurate. Before we came out here to address the nation, we used our executive powers to pass the Assets and Wealth Act. Working with the tax office, we have I like how they're just like chilling out. Every person in the country with wealth into the millions. You know this. Or probably you, you rather you don't. Because the likes of you and me are not welcome in their gated communities. Tomorrow, we will be introducing a sweeping reform of the tax system in this country. No more hiding wealth offshore, no more trust funds or creative accounting. A simpler, fairer unavoidable set of tax laws. So all you bastard public school snobs have got nowhere to hide. And earlier today, we revoked your passport. You want to leave like you threatened before the election? That's fine. But first, you're going to pay up. You're going to pay back. Advance against <laughs> I wanted the from I wanted warring I wanted the boring her face there for a second damn to properly fund health and education to raise the living standards of us all the pundits said we'd have to raise billions but you'll see when we've reclaimed what's ours that's absolute ferret shite so to you posh twats the people who pay you a pittance to serve them drinks in their private clubs the people whose children you raise so they've got time to get even fucking richer advance have this to say to you it ends today we are coming for your sports cars and your mansions and your vineyards it ends today 
We will put the wealth of this country back where it should have always been. In the hands of the people who created it. It ends today. Yes, it ends today. And tomorrow, we'll start making it fair again. Just like we promised we would. I don't even know what they're saying. ladies and gents, and until then, I suggest we all get pissed. I can't argue with that. Thank you for your time. You're only meant to censor the square word. Well, an interesting acceptance speech well, there from the interesting acceptance speech And there. our apologies for the fruity language. <coughs> and our apologies Hopefully for the we've got that language. bleeped out for you in time. Hopefully yes, very if filthy. Not, someone's going to be in trouble. If not, someone's going to be in trouble. So, as the country braces itself for so, new government, that's all from us this evening at the National Night News. News. We'll be back tomorrow with full coverage we'll of the first day under with advance. Full coverage of the first I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Have a peaceful night. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Have a peaceful night. Right, looks like you've got it now. Thanks for the help, mate. I've got to go. Ferry's about to leave. Probably won't be coming back. Job's yours, mate. Good luck. Won't be coming back. This is some weird fever dream. Am I dying now? You should be so lucky. I'll see you tomorrow night. Not coming for a drink? No, got a date. Lucky you. Try not to get murdered. Try not to get murdered. So the swears that I guess I missed. Oh, they're the bads. Dull editing, dull editing, dull editing, dull editing. Wow, dull editing is a is a pretty evil. It seems your editing was okay. Okay. All right, mate. I've left you a voicemail. I thought you'd end up here. Most people come into the archive room when they're done with a broadcast. That way you can see what you did and how it looked to the public. As you can see, there's three sections to the archive. Broadcasts, that's what you've put out. Rushes, which is all the stuff that was on all the screens. And adverts, which is any advert that you've chosen to show. So let's have a look at the broadcasts. Okay, on the left you can see all the broadcasts that you've done. You can also get to hear from the main menu if you don't actually want to do a broadcast, you just want to see some of your past work. Select any of those and click load tape. Why not watch what you just did? When you're done, hit back. Well, in a few moments, we'll be going live to tonight's be National all this. Nightly News. But before that, let's take a look at what's coming up later on tonight on Channel One. At seven o'clock, it's the... Okay, I'm guessing good. Right. Click on rushes and let's have a look at those. Okay, these four screens, they're exactly the same as the four screens that feed you the studio signal when you're doing the actual news. Of course, the difference here is you can mute any screen you like or any combination of screens. So it looks like there's going to be like another overarching story. Just select any segment, that's any bit between ad breaks over on the left, and hit play. When you're done checking out the backstage secrets, hit back. These aren't my cards. Please tell me these aren't my cards. No, they're the right ones, apparently. Oh, but this gives me nothing, Jenny. They must see that. I oh, know. I think they think you won't have anything to say. Oh, for God's sake, come on. It's a huge day. <laughs> it's not an... Absolute bogey. I don't care, Rob. I'm not doing it. I agreed to do one beastly interview a day. I made that completely clear when we started. Take my contract! Hi, I'm Megan. Oh, piss off! You're on thin bloody ice, Rob. Whole wheat, man! Whole wheat! We're coming back from the break. <laughs> Quiet in the studio. Thank you so much. For... Ten seconds, everybody! <laughs> That's a good start to that. Five, four, three... Oh, Pouring oh, a mayonnaise. Mm. You know, see if you make me go out in the pastures. Yeah, I thought it might increase our viewing figures. Every day. You offer me prawns every day. Ten seconds, everybody. That's how I show love. You're trying to kill me. And yet you persist oh, going oh. five, four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not saving quit. No. Continue. You arrive home to find a post on the map. Most being nothing more than just usual junk mail. One letter, however, catches your eye. 
The team wants to know you! Curiosity gets the better of you. And you open it. It's from the new advanced government! Uh-oh. Asking for information on all citizens. Uh-oh. First page is already, uh, is, is filled in already. Your name. Your spouse. Your children. Well, you me, you muse. At least they got the basics right. Uh, the rest of the questions on the left, uh, you have to complete. They uh, appear to be mandatory. Question one. Upon starting a new job, you would be friendly, introduce yourself to the new coworkers, be productive and get to work immediately. Ease yourself in, orientate yourself with the new workplace. Reminisce with friends about old jobs. Uh, yeah. Question number two. A colleague in a different department is confident in you Oh, sorry. That has confided in you that they've been taking home confidential information. Uh. Now a file of my importance has gone missing. You would help your colleague cover up their violation. Recommend that your colleague reports it. Promise your colleague that you won't tell anyone. Report the violation to your supervisor immediately. Are we playing papers, please? Or, you know, keep everything good? I don't know what my workplace environment is like for this, you know? What, who am I working for? Why do they need to know? It's only minor importance. Uh... An entire department was fired today for constant underperformance. Your boss has put it put in place new targets that are significantly higher than your previous ones. You would leave work on time. Stay late to ensure you hit the first deadline. Leave work early and head to the pub to chat about the changes with your colleagues. Leave work early and head home to see your family. You pay me to be there. Uh, it's the annual company barbecue and you and your family have been invited. You are looking forward to enjoying a nice day out with the family and friends. Uh, are washing, you are washing your hair that day. <laughs> you go if you're free, but wouldn't mind missing it. You have been practicing with your coworkers and think you'll win the talent contest this year. It's work events. You don't need to go to them. Uh, question number five. You had a long, successful career and are about to retire. In your speech, you list your achievements and all the good memories you have of working there. Give an honest review of the pros and cons of the company. Focus on issues and challenges you face while working there. <laughs> Refuse to retire. Oh. Definitely go over the, what, the pros and, like, everything. Just go over all the issues, you know? <laughs> uh, in your spare time, you like to relax alone, doing things like listening to music and making models. Ooh. Uh, attend political rallies. Stand up for what you believe in. Encourage and support and support your children with their hobbies. Play in your local sports team. Aw, support the children. Your ideal holiday getaway would be surrounded by natural beauty. Get away from the strain of daily grind. Exploring some more fun familiar and discovering new experiences and challenges. A structured day at a theme park busting with, with, with thrills and attractions for you and your family. A romantic getaway with your partner to a tropical island paradise surrounded by natural beauty. Yes. It is most important that the government keeps people safe, free, happy, equal. Ooh, oh my goodness, that is a loaded question. Holy shit. Um, I 
I'm so happy it's not asking me to list these from most important to least important. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so it's each of these, each of these talk about an extreme. Safe would be police state. Free would be, uh, would be like every man for themselves. Happy would end up being uh, censorship. And then equal would be um, basically just, uh, what is it? What do they call it? Like with, with Russia, like full on, yeah, com, 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 communism? Communist, yeah. Which I think is a little bit of like happy as well too, but uh, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm gonna go with safe though. Safe's my most important. Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, advance, uh, knowing your, or ad advance knows your time is valuable. And we appreciate your help in leading the nation to a brighter future. Sign your name. A family matter. It's late. Sam and the kids have gone to bed. You're just dying. Up a favorite. Wait, you're just dying? Drying up a favorite coffee cup. Wow. Uh, a worn out souvenir of your first trip together. The prince faded, but the goofy face still makes you smile. A knock at the window brings you back to reality. There in the garden, clutching a gaudy neon green suitcase, is Chris. Sam simply. As soon as you let them in, they sit at the kitchen table, visibly stressed. Hmm. Free should include safe. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Is like you you'd have to take a look at them as in a bubble. You'd want them all to exist, but what is more important? Because let's just take the free and safe one for example, right? If you're safe, that means that if anyone does anything to 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 have personal harm to someone, that means that they're no longer free. They need to be stopped, so then safety can still be upheld. If things were free, if a person says they want to do something, including doing something that harms someone else, that they would need to do it. So therefore, it would kill what safe is. So what one are you more likely to go with? Should a person be free or should a person be safe? Should a group of people be free or should a group of people be safe? It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, there's a garden. Uh, oh, sorry, no. Yeah, Chris looks deeply, a deep, deep, takes a deep breath. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for busting in so late, Alex. Chris stammers, but I need a favor and you're the only one I can ask. No problem. What's going on? Are, are, are you okay? Should I go get Sam? You must have seen all the crazy advanced stuff. The assets of, of, of and wealth. The assets and wealth act, they're calling it. Taking people's hard earned money to fund the lazy. It's bullshit. You've never seen Chris this agitated. I'm not saying the top, I'm not saying the top 1% or whatever don't have the, have stu, don't have stupid money, Chris adds hastily, but they can afford it. People like me, we're gonna lose everything. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fair. It's fair that he's, that he's upset, but literally everything, you know, you, you, you could be, could be in a cult you know you could be part of some groups that are asking for a percentage of your of your of your actual savings of your money your your weekly paycheck you know there's, there's it's, what's this is the government they're gonna take it all take it all from you oh that's awful but i'm not sure how how i can help you were always the well-off one in the family 
I'm sorry, but taking from the rich to help the poor doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> oh God, this is, this is, is this, is this my family? Is this a person in my family? Oh no. Um, okay. So do I, do I give them, um, do I basically highlight their entitlement or do I say you deserve it? <laughs> <laughs> Both pretty negative answers. Wife's brothers. Ooh, okay. Um, you deserve it. <laughs> Chris' eyes. Chris's eyes flash dangerously. You can't possibly be that naive. They're taking whatever they want to dis uh, and distributing it. As they see fit, no governments should have that kind of power. Look, that's not why I'm here. I need to borrow your passport. My passport? For what? My passport? I can't give you that. That's, it's illegal. They've taken mine and half the bloodiest countries, but people always say you and I look so familiar or so it looks similar. So... Chris is now pacing. I need to leave before it's too late. Once I'm out, me and my wife will be safe. But I need to go now before they freeze my accounts. Please, Alex, I wouldn't ask if I had any other choices. Wait, what? Me and my, oh my God, I actually thought that said wife, but it's actually money. My, me and my money will be safe. Eat a big giant bag of dicks. <laughs> okay, it's just up there to save. Let me go get it and you can take it. Sure, there's another way. <laughs> you can't be that serious. Good Lord. Chris's mouth falls open. You're joking, right? I've always done right by you and Sam. I've treated your children like they are my own. We're family. Does that not mean anything to you? All right, I'll get the passport. Family's family. It's against the law. I can't help you with this. Fine, I'll solve this myself. Chris spits. So much for family loyalty, eh? Grabbing the nigh off, the the nigh on, fluorescent ne Grabbing the neon. Nigh on? Can can you not use the word neon? What the hell is Nyan? Nyan fluorescent suitcase. Chris disappears into the night. You go back to the dishes, picking up Sam's cup again. The peeling face now seems to bore into you. The knot in your stomach tightens. Screw the 1%. Should we play this? Is the toy safe? <laughs> With a porky little twist. Mm. 
Dogs have their own secret language. Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody. What? Not the best source of consumer pricing. And don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five, four, three. It's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's national. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight: destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this chart. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist in radical free thinking. With the assets in Wealth Act on the brink of raising living standards for the vast majority of the country, I'll be asking my guests... Photoshop the way smiles. Out with the old Remington's fist at the point of Sophia Remington. As claims spreads. From Dan, thanks for those. ...taken from our archive gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. <laughs> Sophia Remington's appointment is a risk for the giant mega corporation. <laughs> Sophia, as our regular viewers will be aware, has always been a wild child and has been romantically linked to several movie stars and sports personalities. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehearts. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. Damn. This is, of course, only the latest in a series <clears throat> of successful... This is fine. This is fine. In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, We will face the plentiful... I was putting Mr. Snuggles quicker. We always have. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very program. Johnny is seen here with socialite... It was him throwing up, barfing. Whose recent show, Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch, has kept her firmly in the public eye. <gasps> Could romance be on the cards for these two budding youngsters? And previous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more powers passing to the police, and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced shaped sledgehammer to crack a nut? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new assets in World Bank firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. I think I went a little bit soon. Swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, 
The government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislative reforms. But what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. How confident is this all there? Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. The grand plan. The grand plan, Alan. It's all in my book, Alan James. Ah, Plus. yes. Jeremy. Money. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile, and short-lived. Well, while want. you're making money, right? Perhaps Advance have just realized that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colorful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is shamelessly self-promoting. <laughs> Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond? Nailed that one. <laughs> I think they're watching carefully. Advance the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't and this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more Sharing the love. Cups, Kira! This young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've really Can't say bollocks? But it's all a little so weird. To keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilized the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilize, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic pedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research in the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken science and OP arts. Like opiates. See? <laughs> I just love getting a reaction. This is the issue. It's all coming from the water, the chemicals, they're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong, I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If advance <laughs> lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be Belief juice. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, uh, what does the future look like to you, Alan? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomized into submission. Well, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, I got consequences? I hope so too, Jeremy. What's this? Well, I don't know what she meant by that. I didn't even hear what she said. Oh my god, what is that eyes? wants this Christmas. All the other kids have got one. That's right, little one. You don't want to be left out. I know that I can't go to Oh, Mr. Snuggle, you're so silly. Oh, Mr. Snuggle, Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? 
Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of a hard face and a cold hand of justice? Well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Who is that? We need more support from ministers. We need more support from ministers. What are you doing? Well, we need change at a structural level, Jeremy. I'm leaving, Greg. <laughs> Time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Is, just hang on. Just hang on. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, no, Jeremy. It's nationwide. <laughs> just give me five minutes and talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. <laughs> the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about. Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Hello, Mr. Donaldson. We need... Uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Yes, I understand. Yes. understand. Yes. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector the there. Gregory Judge, there. thank you for joining us. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective <laughs> on our nation's plight. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Do you think there's a problem with oh, I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. Oh, you get to I'm see sure the arguing. Return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife uh, or cop. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's book, probably oh. shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? To what do you this? Gays and gypsies mainly. For what? It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a brave gimp's escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Is that? As I was saying, uh, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Oh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. You can't even give it to me. And whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people of this. Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this is not a Clive, I am not having this again. As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Everyone has a soft story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter oh Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. There's moving parts now. Really locking down the police's visit to normality. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary, and menacing a smart. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Many happy returns. Cheers, Jez. <laughs> Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Does. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? <laughs> Titwank, Tony. <laughs> Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. He's going to make me and say. Obviously, Titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise yeah, party. Sorry, <laughs> a good bunch of lads. Okay, well, we're trying to get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Titwank, Tony. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris. Little Chris. Oh, no. Oh. 
Party's here. One sec, love. Tip my toes on the noose. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. Inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this now? You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Really yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal no here, Tony. Fucking way, <laughs> well, we're just trying to get that signal back. No, I think we. Yes, Tony. Tony, I mean, we're literally away for two seconds. How has this happened, Tony? Can you hear me? Well, that was too loud, maybe? Damn. I managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some... I think it was stayed too long? Oh, I was definitely shorter than most. We'll no, I guess we'll find out later. After these we'll messages. Yes. Oh, mate, I ain't got long and I'm quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't know, you won't get punished. Can I do music? Just try and stay in the groove. I only got a B so for that segment. I thought that was fantastic. Starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so Welcome to Black. I'm Megan Wolf. Welcome to Black. Tonight's culture spot. I'll be chatting. I'm in trouble. First beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College, who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Win Stanley Dash Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. And I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> and we're joking. Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria, and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately... I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so so I knew the ropes, as it were. Oh, right, yes, you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Right. Yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. Maths yeah. is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history. Aristotle believes I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey... I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences, and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> we just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And to teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yeah. Right. Oh, no. Context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like all of us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, Coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> so, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grant? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a There was, like, literally no good scenes at that point. He from his bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also all three. Oh, I guess I could have went to, like, the, the friendship one. 
and uh, they, we, we rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know that? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We were not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly, but... We did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day. And so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. Okay. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> so let's have a look at a short section of Hey, Friendship. Dear Diary. I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day. It's another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. 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 But still I walk the corridors alone. But still I walk the corridors alone. alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi Gary. Oh heavens no! It's Gary the Fifth. Going somewhere, little first year. Great. I've been looking for some poor oh, victims to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Excuse me. I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. It's so important. Maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Just keep going for fuck's sake. Right. Uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Not today, Gary the Fist. Not today. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? <laughs> My arm's free coach. Brilliant, keep going. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I'm Gary the Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. Oh no. Take a look at me. Take a little look at my face. I could be you. She could be you. And you could be me. Or you could be me. Ah. They don't want off beats. Hey, kids, I'm Gary the Fist. People think that folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice. And I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the Fist. Fist. I grew up on a council I'm... estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late. And he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, where's my dinner? Perfect. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 
That's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night. All the headlines oh, that's pretty the damn country. funny, man. My name's Jeremy Dawson. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. What the literal fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. <laughs> I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. <laughs> Oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio. Uh, bonus broadcast. Oh, I got a little rocky during the music. Outstanding sensor or censoring. Your editing was okay. Damn. A plus during the first though. Partial sensor, dull edit. Yeah, I, I know I got that dull editing. Partial sensor, I know I missed on twat. I wonder what this drop was, though. Huh. Store? Fun? I let you respond to your mum's pastor? Auto bleeping? Don't be like what? Interesting. Okay, a couple days later. Plus, had so much fun making shooting these. I agree. Day 15, a late night. You arrive home after another long shift to find a note waiting for you on the countertop. You recognize Sam's hurried scrawl. Chris has been evicted for not paying rent. You know where this is headed. Sam's gone to pick up Chris's stuff from the street. Don't wait up, underline twice. So, this is your fault now, is it? You sulkily press play on the cheap horror film you were going to watch together. It used to, ab it, it used to abruptly terrify you as a kid, but always makes the two of you laugh. It's not the same without Sam, but you still chuckle to yourself occasionally. Uh, just as you get to the good part, the part where Candy decides to investigate alone, your 14-year-old son interrupts. He wants to go to a friend's house. He looks at you in a way only a child can, pleading, but somehow defiant. You let him go as long as he promises to be home by 11. You tell Charlie, no! He knows he's not allowed to be out this late on a school night. I'll let it go. Clearly surprised, he practically races out the door. You doze in front of a, an, you doze in front of the movie. You do, you doze in front of the movie. Waiting f up for his return, uh, you start. You start awake to the. What is with this? You start awake to the sound of. TV static. You start awake. It's gone midnight, and there's no sign of Charlie or Sam. It's a school night, and he prompts, so you go over there and march him home. 
You're tired and in a bad mood. You trust Charlie. He'll be home soon. I'm going to go find him. Yeah, no, I, like, I, I, I get it. I've just never heard, like, saying, like, you start by something, you know? That's all. Uh, arriving at the friend's house, you find your son, who miraculously notices the time when he, uh, miraculously notices the time when he sees you. He may think you were born yesterday, but at least he apologizes. That's something. You recognize the cheeky, mischievous look. You can't help but let him off this time. Yeah. I, I am, I'm happy with that. Uh, exclamation mark game if you want to check it out. Uh, you can't help but crack a smile as you look around the table. The snow has settled on the grass outside. The kids are pulling a cracker while your elderly mom tries to keep her eyes open. You did always have a soft spot for Christmas. You're sitting at the head of the table now. Your dad's place. Oh, no. Pulling a cracker? I'm thinking like the, uh, the, 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 the cracker, the pop crackers. Uh, it's been a tense afternoon. Everyone can feel it. It's the first time you've seen Chris since you refused your part with the passport. It's a big change for Sam. The two siblings used to be inseparable. Christmas is usually such a nice time of the year. The clatter of cutlery is all that can be heard as Chris stares pointedly at you. Are you having a nice Christmas, Grandma? You make a toast. You stay silent. You stand and raise your glass. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm glad we're all here. And the murmurs of cheers and much clinking glasses. Chris doesn't move. Yeah, we're all here. No thanks to you. Chris, sighs Sam. Come on now. It's Christmas. Can't we all just put this behind us? I wasn't talking to you. Sam's right. Let's try and enjoy ourselves. Chris turns away from you, talking, uh, taking some frustration out on a cheap cut of roast chicken. Your daughter, Susie, seizes the opportunity to corner you. Susie's the 18 or 19 year old. You, you know how you love me? You chuckle. This sounds familiar. I'm not gonna like this, am I, you joke? Susie rolls her eyes. You know me and my friends are planning to go traveling this year, Susie begins innocently. Well, I was hoping you'd help me with the money. She interrupted by Chris, who makes a divert snort, or assertive snort. I wouldn't hold your breath, Susie. Not known for your generosity, are you, Alex? Chris, do us all a favor and shut your mouth. Ignore Chris and smile at your daughter. <laughs> we'll see so many parts of the world and learn so much about culture, Susie gushes. Uh, you sigh and lower your voice. You know money is really tight right now that Grandma's staying here, but just don't have that kind of... We, we just don't have that kind of money, Susie. But please! Harlot's parents are helping her! Harriet's, not Harlot's. It's, it's pretty much a Harlot at that point. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I wish that we could afford it, but we can't. Okay, fine. We'll find... Oh, I don't want to say the all right, fine. I just want to say, okay, dear, we'll make it work. Sam interrupts. Sorry. Uh, sorry, were you going to consult me on this or were you just going to carry on pretending I didn't exist? Oh, shit. You feel your cheeks flush red and turn away so Chris can't see. You know you haven't been the most attentive lately, but this rebuke seems harsh. Sam ex uh, exhales and seems to brighten. Sam's exhale and seems, exhales and seems to brighten. But luckily for someone, I agree. This is a great opportunity and I will, I'm sure that we can find money somewhere. I think that was a fail fail. That would have happened no matter what, you know? Because if I would have said no, she still would have popped up. Aren't you gonna consult me? But I'm happy that she agrees. Sam, this isn't like you. Uh, Charlie excuses herself awkwardly as you try to clear the plates in silence. Have you had a nice a birthday, Pat? Your mother chimes in cheerfully. Merry freaking Christmas. Hmm.
Welcome windfall. Okay. You're leaping through a pile of accumulated posts. Each new bill put pulls on your gut like a lead weight till a flash of blue light makes you pause. Recognizing uh, the teal advanced logo on your envelope, you tear it open. Dear Wilson residents, thank you for sending us your passports for approval. We can now confirm their receipt and validation for the new assets and wealth redemption scheme. Hopefully this will make the last month of arguments with Sam worth it. As such, it is our pleasure to enclose a check, which we hope you will see as a symbol, not only for our gratuity to you, but of our unwavering commitment to creating society free of inequity. The throbbing in your flesh, speed-induced paper cut is the only reason you can believe you're awake. A check, a sizable one at that. Chris was right. Advance really are redistributing wealth. We will continue to strive for the betterment of this nation and its people. Forwards together, Julius Salisbury and Peter Clement. The weight of your financial burdens lessen slightly. It blitz. Yeah, if I gave my passport away, I wouldn't be able to do this. Well, number one, like the big thing for the passport, I didn't want to give away because if they were requiring people to have passports and all of a sudden I don't have mine, holy shit, I think I'd be in more trouble at that point. Long weekend. Why does the zip on the on this damn case never close? It's your anniversary. Uh, every year, you and Sam go away for the weekend, usually camping. You're not made money. Uh, you've been looking forward to it for ages. Finally, getting some time alone together where you can forget about the noise of life. No kids, no work, just a bit of romance and some peace and quiet. The zip finally gives up the battle and you drag the bulging suitcase down the stairs. The answering machine is blinking on the hall table. Good evening, Alex. This is Mr. Boseman. I'm calling you to inform you that you will be required to work this weekend. Your heart sinks. What are you doing there? You're a double. Some information has come to light concerning the rising tensions between our nations and foreign powers. And the national nightly, nightly news team will be working around the clock to ensure we break the story first. Needless to say, I will expect your attendance tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. sharp. Have a pleasant evening, Alex. Uh, shock turns into annoyance and then fury. Well, I'm already out of town. Ha <laughs> ha! What are you going to tell Sam? Sam comes downstairs, bringing with excitement, kissing you, then grabbing her, grabbing the car keys from the dish and start loading your bags into the back. Ignore the message you need this weekend. Apologize profusely to your spouse, but you really should go into work. Bossman's temper is legendary. Message deleted. What was that? Comes with a voice behind you. Nothing important. You reply as you put your coat, uh, adrenaline coursing through your body. Grabbing Sam around the waist, you practically slam the front door. You might as well enjoy your time off. You're gonna pay for it on Monday. An unwelcome return. Uh, when you get to work Monday morning, you get some sour looks from your exhausted colleagues. A note sits waiting for you. The immaculate script is bold red. I am very disappointed, Wilston. Winston. Winston. A permission slip. Uh, your son, Charlie, 14, hovers at your elbow as you read. Do you find yourself striving to, ex to uh, achieve? Are you an attractive member of the team? Do you like reaping the benefits of cooperation? Join the advanced go-getters today. Uh, forwards together. Remember how I didn't play that tape? This doesn't sound like the youth club he told you about. Oh no. Oh no. Charlie. 
Charlie grabs the flyer from you and thrusts a form into your hands. So I can I can walk there straight from school and Ben's sister can drop us home after. So you won't have to do anything. You sign the permission slip and let your son join the advanced go-getters. You refuse to uh, sign the form for your son. Sorry, mate. I just don't think this is the right place for you. You hand it back to him gently. Wait, what? This is so unfair. Why? I know it seems that way, Charlie, but you'll understand soon enough. Yeah, there was an ad for him last, last day. A free ticket. Some guys at work gave them, uh, gave them to me. They can't go. Sam stands in front of you, branching two tickets. Uh, you see the title in bold letters. Uh, Alan James is right in front of you. Oh, in front of you. Wait, it's that stupid guy with the book. I'm really unsure. What do you think? Shall we go? Free tickets are free tickets. He's a character, and it'll be hilarious if nothing else. I don't think so. This guy's a nut job. I'm sorry, you say, but I can't sit through any more of this crap. Sam bursts into a fit of laughter. Thank God, I was worried you were gonna say yes. Uh, you decide to stay home and eat pizza. James Allen isn't worth your time. <laughs> Wifey has liked both of my uh, but both of my stuff so far. I like this. Uh, a profitable partnership. After a particularly long day at work, you come home to find the post sorted into piles that Sam has taken to doing recently. Most of it is the unusual rubbish, but a letter with an increasingly familiar advanced logo and an urgent respond immediately uh, plastered in the front in a correspondingly urgent red font grabs your attention. Dear Wilston residents, Winston. This letter is to inform you that the advanced government has taken another step forward in their fight for equality by nationalizing the largest private corporations and redistributing their resources amongst the citizens of this great country. The Partnership Bonds Program ensures that wealth created by the people is delivered to the people. Ah, uh, you don't remember this being uh, in the uh, manifesto. Every household will be will become a partner in two of four carefully selected institutions. Wait, what? Chosen by advance for cons uh, for con consent, high performance, and financial security. Wait, what? Please know, all returns are based on public opinion and cannot be guaranteed. Okay, okay. Three red flags in a row. Please select one of the following. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's like three big red flags in a row. Holy shit. Eye the Beholder Incorporated. Whether it's cosmetics, clothing, or clothes, or coacher, coacher, uh, we see the beauty in all our customers. Neil's Deals Limited. It's always a steal from Crazy Neil. Um, pleasure Corp. Our business is your pleasure. From sports to travel or even just you time. Some do you time. You can't say pleasure without leisure. Okay. Uh, Remington, Remington, this, this looks flick. We're everywhere and everywhere. A worldwide company for, okay. I like that sound of that one. Uh, and your, on your second bond, please select the following, um, bond. Wait, I'm going to lose money. Shit. Pleasure Corp. Thank you for your selection. Please return this form using the envelope provided. You will receive a report from your partnership in three to six working months. This seems even, uh, this seems, it seems even the advance can't defeat the quagmire of government bureaucracy. Government, 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 governmental. The future of this nation in its partnership forwards together Salisbury and Peter Clement. Uh, just how much influence could you have? <laughs> how much influence could I have? How much influence could I have, chat? Hmm.
Excuse me? his imaginary friend in the sky over you. I don't know why I talk to you. You're probably just a really awful date. Ten seconds, everybody. Like I said, all of you. Did your personality accidentally slip out? Correct. It's going in five, four, three. It's time for the National Nightly News with Jeremy Donaldson and Megan Wolfe. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Uncle Whoops. Our main a mysterious symbol has appeared overnight on thousands of buildings throughout the capital. Tonight, in an exclusive live interview with Prime Ministers Julius Salisbury and Peter Clement, I'll be asking what this mysterious symbol might mean. Critics have been quick to dismiss the graffiti as a publicity stunt, or an act of frustration by a tiny disorganised group of those who will never, under any circumstances, be content. We shall overcome. Trapped in Dante's taint for more than a month now, doctors Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensford and David Wong announced today that they're considering two possible options. With two of the finest minds in science working together, hopes are still high for the eventual return of the team to dry land. Without enough engineers to successfully fix their craft, the team seem likely to attempt to farm the cabin's <laughs> ecosystem while they wait for rescue from above ground. <laughs> I think I'll stick to risotto, Jeremy. <laughs> I like it. their opinions, the formerly rich are fighting back with a naked protest. Our very own Robin Short was on hand earlier today when this new protest group first presented themselves. Spokesman went Whoops, to I didn't swap the other one. Today. They've had the shirts off our backs. They might as well have the rest of it too. And while it's easy to laugh, perhaps we should all just be pondering how desperate the formerly rich are to regain their power. Table for two. Johnny Hamsley and Tiffany L'Amour were spotted having a private moment out at lunch today. The popular couple have certainly been on a roller coaster since they started dating late last year. And this image is sure to place them firmly back in the tabloids. Could we be on the verge of the biggest celebrity <laughs> wedding since professional wrestler Randy Grizzlenuts McFridge Grizzle nuts? his longtime tag team partner Tina Tiny Hands last Tina Tiny Hands and Grizzlenuts made entirely of cake. Is this one celebrated role model about to become the bad boy of sports? And radical ideas. In an attempt to put the Mr. Snuggle Hugs disaster behind them, Remington's Fist CEO, Sophia <laughs> Remington, today announced a surprising new project that already has the markets raising money. Known for taking risks and bold strategies, could the adventurous CEO be leading the business giant down a dark alley or taking it to a new level of success? Oh, shit. The manufacturing giant promises that the junior employment opportunity scheme will oh. not only increase employment but also productivity. But critics are speaking out against shit. what they're calling child labor. <laughs> The scheme is being marketed under the slogan "Lots of Little Hands." To make employment lots of opportunity little scheme. With that exclusive prime ministerial interview oh. coming later, and our very own Patrick Bannon coming to you live from the first annual sports board final. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's national nightly news. National nightly news. Where's my makeup girl? Oh shit! Wait. I was supposed to go number four, wasn't I? Not, oh. I was supposed to do number four. Not, not a ad. I, I, I panicked. That was a panic click. Yeah, I don't want child labor. Screw that noise. Oh. 
relationship with his friendship. No. Sorry, are you saying he chose his imaginary friend in the sky over you? I don't know why I talked to you. The problem is a really awful thing. Ten seconds, everybody. Like I said, okay. to all of you. Did your personality actually slip out? I was so fired, five, damn it! Four, it's okay, we're fine. Three. Time for the National Nightly News with Jeremy Donaldson and Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Whoop. A mysterious symbol. Child labor Cups. must go on. Down with the moon. Tonight, in an exclusive live interview with Prime Minister's Julia Sorry and Peter months. Clement, I'll be asking what this mysterious symbol might mean. Critics have been quick to dismiss the graffiti as a publicity stunt, or an act of frustration by a tiny disorganized group of those who will never, under any circumstances, be content. We shall overcome. Trapped in Dante's taint for more than a month now, doctors Ingrid Svorsborg Wait, and Morgensvord and David Wong say taint? announced today that they're considering two possible options. With two of the finest minds in science working together, hopes are still high for the eventual return of the team to dry land. Without enough engineers to successfully fix their craft, the team seem likely to attempt to farm the cavern's ecosystem while they wait for rescue from above ground. <laughs> I think I'll stick to risotto, Jeremy. <laughs> Bearing their opinions, the formerly rich are fighting back with a naked protest. Our very own Robin Short was on hand earlier today when this new protest group first presented themselves. It might seem amusing to us, but clearly this formerly overprivileged section of our society is not adjusting well to the new future. <laughs> it's often too easy to forget. So that text that changes too as well. Is thriving under advance. Table for two. Johnny Hansleeves and Tiffany Lamour were spotted having a private moment out at lunch today. The popular couple have certainly been on a roller coaster since they started dating late last year. And this image is sure to place them firmly back in the tabloids. Could we be on the verge of the biggest celebrity wedding since professional wrestler Randy I was thinking about test results, but married his longtime tag team partner Tina Turner. I, I want to see marriage, man. In a wrestling ring made entirely of cake. Is this one small model about to become the bad boy of sports? And radical ideas. In an attempt to put the Mr. Snuggle Hugs disaster behind them, Remington's Fist CEO, Sophia Remington, today announced a surprising new project that already B. has the market. Not childhood stuff. Known for taking risks and bold strategies, could the adventurous CEO be leading the business giant down a dark alley or taking it to a new level of success? We understand the mobile <laughs> I like this first like oh god please no service will be a new international travel system based around the construction of a major tunnel through the center of the earth. Sophia Remington claims it will make traveling from one side of the world to the other the matter of an afternoon. Geologists are concerned about the implications of digging a hole through the planet, while flat earthers claim it should be quite easy. <laughs> With that exclusive prime ministerial interview coming up later. <laughs> and our very own Patrick Allen coming to you live from the first annual sports board final. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National Nightly News. This is beautiful. Good old flat earth. First tonight, after the Christmas horror caused by Mr. Snugglehugs, we have an exclusive interview with one of the victims. Poor seven-year-old Timmy Tadlock. Timmy Tadlock. Like so many of those affected by the Christmas bloodbath has spent the last three months undergoing a series of reconstructive facial surgeries. Last week, joyfully, he spoke for the first time since the tragedy. Tonight, he talks to us. Before we go to the interview, however, this station would like to issue a full and frank apology for any part we may have played in the tragedy. <laughs> we should never have advertised Mr. Snugglehugs. <laughs> that our publicity, the sheer skirt of this tragedy, and now upwards of 8,000 casualties, might have been averted. On behalf of the Night Lies. News team, we're sorry. In future, we will do better. I don't have that type now of power. Now it's over to Robin Short at the Tadlock family home. Robin? Thank you, Megan. I'm here with Mr. and Mrs. Tadlock and their seven-year-old son, Timothy. Thanks for spending time with us today. Yes, well, you're bloody lucky we're spending any time with you at all. That's what you lot did. You're responsible. 
Well, whose idea was this anyway? It, it, it's all right. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> As you can see, oh my God, he's in bandages. Okay. I'm going to speak to Timmy now. Open. Are you serious? Hello, Timmy. Can you see me? Mummy. Who's that lady? It's a lady from television, Timothy. She's going to ask you a few questions. You be careful now. It upsets him to remember. Don't worry, Mr. Tadlock. I wasn't the youngest ever editor of the Swinstead Middle School Inquirer for no reason. So, Timmy. Was rain? Can you tell us what happened to you? You had just unwrapped Mr. Snugglehugs, hadn't you? Was he under the tree? Yes. I could smell him already. He smelled like... I want to hear this! Ah, uh, yes. That'll be the fur. It's scented with hoof. I was so excited. I ran up to my room and gave him a big hug. He was so soft and warm, like our cat, before he got in the way of Daddy's Porsche. And what did Mr. Snugglehugs say to you? He blinked his real action eyes said you're my very best friend but i sure wish mrs snugglehugs was here and she can't be we're just 89.99 and then and then it's a general error 41 and is that when he burst into flames and then he exploded <laughs> oh, look i've asked you nicely and am i right in saying that one of his real action eyes is now permanently embedded in your cheek yes what? When I took him in at night, it glows through bandages. <laughs> I know it's under there, staring at me. Yeah, some of the other children have started calling him Timmy Three Eyes. And then with his glasses, that's five. It's too many eyes, Robin. And what's the last thing you remember before the darkness overtook you? He looked at me with his one eye and laughed. Laughed as he burned. It sounds very traumatic. Do you have nightmares? No, right. That's quite Do you? enough of Timmy? you two Timmy? coming in here with your camera trying to make a buck out of our suffering. I have it. <laughs> Mr. Tadlock, just a couple more questions. Timmy. Do you think you will ever be what we can call no, no, normal again? Normal. Oh, you've made him cry with all three of his eyes. Oh. Daniel, do you think your parents will ever really love you again? So there you have it, Megan. Just one of the many victims of an indescribable tragedy that has shaken our nation. Thank you, Robin. Harrowing stuff. And many questions to be answered by Sophia Remington in the coming days and months, I'd wait. <coughs> How will she turn this crisis around? So, Jeremy, what are the warning signs of consumers? Well, they're still down there talking. When they're spotting a dangerous toy. Well, Megan, experts advise to always Ooh. check for the new advanced mark, which guarantee a level of safety and quality. Yeah, can we just get a close up on camera three here? So, if we take a look at this national nightly news mark, you should see the mark just on the base of it there. In the wake of the scandal, the government were praised for their swift response. And bringing in this set of stringent checks and new products. It certainly is good to know that someone's watching out for our families. <laughs> when we come back, our very own Patrick Bannon will be live from the sports board finals. <laughs> Stick around, you won't want to miss it. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Oh, sorry, I'm bursting. Oh. She's very good. Who? Hey. Megan. Yes, she is. Watch your back, Jeremy. The women are coming. I'm more worried about this water drinking away. Is this the prostate commercial? It is. Alex, Bozeman, we're getting reports in that naked protesters might try and spoil the sports board final by waving their fleshy bits about. Try and make sure you don't broadcast it. It's 6 p.m. for God's sake. No one wants to see fannies on the news. Bozeman out. And it can cause laundry based trouble between you and your she demon of an ex wife. So, what caused this big old prostate <laughs> in your bum? Well, sorry, me and the doctors, we don't know. But I can tell you, as you get older, your body changes. And that's okay. If you're worried about your swollen bum, yeah. that book and a I always say welcome back. I think we should just keep it as it is. Well, of course you do. I've got one hat line. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't write it, Jeremy. 
That's all right, fine. Jenny, there's nothing wrong with the auto cue. Ten seconds. Oh, I just felt a drip again. Have they not fixed this? You want to see us fry? It's good for the ratings. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan. Coming up later, we'll be speaking to the Prime Ministers about their exciting new healthcare facilities, transition centres. I still see they care. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Jeremy. But first, we're going now to our own Patrick Bannon, who's reporting live from the finals of the new game that's gripping the nation, Sports Board. Patrick? That's right, Megan. You join me live here from the final of the first annual Sports Board Championship. It's been a hotly contested competition so far. I think it's fair to say these two have been dancing around each other all season. First up, we have Ellie Stryker. She's the more experienced of our two players today. Stryker has got an accuracy of seven, a danger rating of K, and a 12-month driving ban. Stryker's known for her signature move for the year, the hamster. And facing her tonight, hoping to prove himself with a career record of 12 outs, 14 finishes, and a divorce pending, is Mr. Wingspan himself, Tommy, the fingernail Harris. Just waiting on the ref now. The slapping ceremony is taking part. <laughs> What's this? Still going on. Striker, of course, uh, first to start as she won the trivia round earlier on by some margin. Uh, Harris, uh, perhaps the brawn and not the brains. Stupid. Eddie Striker. Nice start there from Striker. She's determined not to let the nerve show. Uh, not after last time. On to Mr. Harris now, Tommy. Using his arm to pick up the ball. What? Bad shot there from uh, Harris. Back to striker for shot number three. All right. She's gone to sort of throwing under her legs. Uh, not bad, if you ask me. Bit of business with the ref, but it got sorted out. Back to Harris now. A ball in the hand is worth two in the bush. I'd say that's fair, but what do I know? Now we have the ceremonial changing of the ends. And of course now they go back to the starting positions, as that makes sense. Striker giving it large. Winter round two now with Harris. Okay, okay. you seem to have some sort of streak on the pitch. Uh, apologize if you broadcast any of that stuff. Um, you appear to have spoken to oh, uh, shit. and arse. Um, uh, try and ignore all of that security. I'm sure we're going to take them out as soon as possible. Uh, apologize if uh, we, we broadcast any of that. As I said, um, we're going to get the situation oh, as soon as possible. Um, That's so uh, mean. They're trying to carry on play, but it's probably going to get a I'm struggling to follow. Um, because uh, it's quite nice sort of, and um, women's body, yeah. All right, oh, come on! That, that was now, mean, uh, man! Harris absolutely determined to close that massive gap. Moving from, like, one camera to the Eddie next? Stryker. That was so mean. No, it's just some of the tightest play I've seen ever. What? Harris. Harris. And was that the fitted thumb screw? We haven't seen that at the heat. What a brilliant move. Back to striker. And we know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That is, of course, the ground sound. <laughs> Excellent bit of play here on both sides of the bucket. I don't know about you at home, but I'm finding the technical mastery of this play here absolutely blooming, jaw dropping. <laughs> Ref has spotted something in uh, Harris's neck or head. And Harris is having an absolute shocker. What a miserable start there for Tommy Harris. Uh, but he is a late bloomer, of course. I've always said that. And after all, he is a game of two halves. Uh, four rounds and several sub -genres. But now, of course, it's time for the halftime show. Sponsored by Rivington Swiss. <laughs> Must be some music here to start the halftime show. Careful! Okay, another posh protest to lose on the court here. Oh, shit. It's on left. For having to look directly at it. Um, is uh, running around here with his genitals uh, on display for all to see. Um, and uh, ruining what was shaping up to be quite the dance there. Um, on the right. Now he's thrusting himself in, uh, in Harris's face. Security's on it. Uh, and the bucket's been knocked down. Oh, shit. 
I cannot stand it when the buffer gets knocked over. Um, hopefully he'll get taken out now. Um, uh, genitals flying Man, I was so see, close uh, to making that, like, perfect. Really, if you ask me, not Sunday morning television. I was so close. And uh, out of there, uh, hopefully uh, taken away, never to be seen again. Uh, taken away, never to be seen again. <laughs> 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 what the hell is that? And a lovely finish there on both sides of the bucket. I wouldn't like to call that one. Uh, She's trying to hold her three, her everything together right now. Two players' heads, uh, but unfortunately, because of science, we can't. He's trying to hold it together too. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> Not bad. Well, that ball boy's giving me the eye all the whole day. Uh, striker there, not a great start. Um, she looks a bit flustered, I think, after all that swinging around. Back to Harris here. God, what I wouldn't give to be that ball. I'm all right, ladies. What? <laughs> Tommy Harris. And it dribbled down his arm, which is actually a really good move, because, of course, if it dribbles down his arm and goes on the floor, it's not going in the bucket. Back to striker. I was going minus there for a second. Jeez. The striker's gone for the animal bonus there, but, of course, perhaps... And yes, Harris has counted with a tiny bell. That is wonderful play. Of course, we've seen that before. Look at her face. She is absolutely Tommy, gutted. Tommy, what a mug. Tommy, um, that could have been the clincher. What a massive shame. Um, uh, Harris to serve now. Um, Harris, of course, undefeated by Kestrel. His last four back. Here we go. Tommy Harris. That's all right. That's all right. Not bad there. He threw it quite far away from him, which is quite a good idea. Very clever there. Perhaps a little contact caution from the referee, who's been, if you ask me, a little bit harsh. Ellie Stryker. And she's let the nerves get to her. What the hell was that? You hate to see it, don't you? You cannot believe it. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, like. Oh, God, another one. Okay, staying on right. Um, uh, I mean, a sort of uh, uh, breast and genitals for all to see. Um, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Um, they, they're sort of everywhere, aren't they? Uh, they are sort of everywhere right on. now. Um, the players are trying to carry on, but of course it's difficult because... Um, I don't think I got anything yet. Protesters, uh, hopefully we can get them taken off soon so we can carry on with the match. Oh, oh, yes, oh, 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 what's going on here? Yes, yes. We want our money. Yes, very good. Take them away from me. Bloody wasters. Absolute wasters. <laughs> Oh, jog on! <laughs> An absolute bloody... <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, and now we're going to go into the final round. Uh, and of course, as it's a Tuesday... Okay, it's not bad, not bad. Round. I think that was pretty good. Believe it. Uh, nice imaginary shot there from uh, Harris. It really could go anywhere at this point. Um, really high level play here for two hats. Jog on top of the score. The bucket getting moved back to its proper place. About time, if you ask me. She's uh, juggling it around from her hands. Uh, and she's uh, put it in her mouth like as if it was an egg. And now she's um, and she spat it out. She did the egg spit. So uh, a wonderful move there, quite late on, uh, from striker. But she's in it to win it. On it, like a car bonnet. Uh, Tommy Harris here, having a bit what? of beef. And he's peeling it as if it were a banana, which is an interesting move. Um, I'm not sure if he hasn't had his potassium or what's going on today with Harris. And he's throwing it, and the banana was the ball! What a fantastic move there from Harris! Unfortunately, that is the end. What a pathetic... There we go, Jeremy, that is over. How can he look his eight-year-old son in the face tonight? What a lump! Uh, we just have to wait for the referee now to announce it to make sure it is all official. <laughs> In, please. And the winner, and the winner of the first annual the first Sports Board annual Championship, Sports Board Championship <laughs> is... Everyone! Okay, the rest of the three once again, a win 
everyone, uh, including me as my 15th win in Sports Ball Championship. Um, First I'm annual 15th win. Nice. Uh, another wonderful oh. victory for me. Uh, here come the on-site security to collect their medals. Uh, they're sixth and seventh, respectively. Um, and thanks again for watching the uh, Sports Ball Championships. Uh, what more is there to say? I'm Patrick Bannon. Um, looking forward to celebrating tonight. Um, and all I always have to say, Jeremy, is back to you in the studio. Patrick Bannon uh, had an extraordinary fight. Historic sports ball, Jeremy. I didn't know you were a fan. Oh, yeah, I can wrench a doubler with the best of them, I'll have you know. I certainly wouldn't bet against you. Uh, when we come back... <laughs> I'll be talking live with Prime Ministers Julius Salisbury and... Okay, I'm not a fan of this. This is weird. ...have a big announcement you wouldn't want to miss. That's coming up. Oh, oh shit! One minute back. Fucking microphone! Oh, dropped. shit! What? Fucking microphone! Just drop me! Where's that sound guy? Everything okay? Oh, the mics are just trying to kill us now, apparently. You'll be fine. You're unshockable. <laughs> I'm immune to your cheap flat. Did, did I end up shocking him, or was that just like the, the general electricity? <laughs> Shit. Postman again. Just heard from the chaps in maintenance that this storm is causing the odd power surge. Some of your controls might be a bit, uh, tough. Dangerous. Now, I know you're tough, and you can take the odd shock for the sake of a perfect news broadcast, but too many in quick succession can stop the old ticker. Ticker, that's what this I is for? I'm make the right decisions. Postman so out. Sorry about oh, my God. Really? Yeah. Censor? Seem to have sprung a leak. Well, uh, several, actually. You're gonna need a whole new lining up there. Triple C, I shouldn't wonder. We'll look into it. So it's so good to see you again. Miss Wolf, your star seems to be in the ascendant. It's a great time to be alive. Too bloody right, Peter Clement. Megan Wolf. Well, that's a firm handshake. You oh, I don't like, she's don't like this. She looks. <laughs> <laughs> Am I here? Uh, here, with Mr. Clement on your left. Right you are, pet. You'll see that. Ten seconds, everybody. No, mine's fine. Have you had a little accident? She's a cow. Five, four, three. Welcome back. I am delighted to be joined by Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clark. Oh, I don't like this electricity to the thing, National man. Nightly News Prime Ministers. Oh, oh my Julia goodness! And Peter. We don't believe much in titles. It doesn't seem very advanced. We're delighted to be here. Well, firstly, I should ask how you feel about the graffiti that's been springing up across the capital. Oh, God, I can't move that. Oh, no. No, you definitely shouldn't be worried. Well, not unless you've got a fatal paint allergy anyway. But, yes, it does seem that there are still some people we haven't been able to help. You know, whinges mostly. But people who have yet to benefit from the many advantages of the new future. Okay. And you know, Megan, as my old mum used to say, there are some fissants who just don't know how to be happy. We're working hard to reach these people, find out what they're angry about and how we can help. The door to my government is always open. Some entrepreneur on there. But we didn't come here to talk about what may yet turn out to be some alternative arts project. Which we no doubt will have funded. When we want to talk to the nation about something far more exciting. Yes, your office brief does the... Ah, Fritz! ...to make, although we're being surprisingly secretive about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Megan. Oh, Let me ask you okay, it's not usually how it works, but... Uh, what scares you? Son of a bitch! I mean, really scares you. Ah, uh, oh. It's death, pet. She's talking about death. We're all afraid of our deaths. It's part of being human. Sorry, are you saying that advance have cured death? <laughs> that would be a vote, would it? Yep, yeah, that was definitely a drop there. <laughs> but while we may not have cured death, we hope we found a way to make it much less scary. And much less painful and much less expensive. No, but, but which is me close up, Cameron? Oh, sorry, it's, it's Cameron right now. When I was 13, my mam came and got me from school. We had to go to the hospital. My granddad, he collapsed that morning. So we'd all to say our goodbyes. Force gameplay? Oh, I love this. This is fun. It takes like the, um, what I didn't like about like uh, Papers, Please, and they, they've shifted a little bit differently. And he said to me, Peter, he said, it's the right time. I don't ever want to be a burden to the people I love. Was that the last time you saw him? Nope. Three days later, we were back home. He lived with us for nine miserable years after that. He had to be fed with a rubber spoon. He had a commode. So he'd just take a shit right there in the lounge. I'll take it. I don't care. He wouldn't even wait till half time. Perhaps 
sounds. Oh, um, it, it was awful. It was awful for us. And this is the point. It was awful for him. He could see it was destroying me man, watching him slowly fade away. And he wouldn't beg her to turn off ah, this is not good. breathing equipment at night, but she couldn't. Or she wouldn't. It were a crime, you see. And she didn't want to lose the children, as well as her old man. No family should have to suffer like Peter's did. And now no family will have to. The health service is today opening the first of 300 new transitions. Oh, I can't move. The transition centers will handle everything for your last days. The legal, financial, medical, and oh, emotional I can't move. costs are all catered for and paid for by the government. So even the poorest citizen gets to pass on with dignity when they choose. And that choice is important. This is a service only for people who choose it. People who feel they run their course and don't want to burden themselves or their families with a slow, long, humiliating decline. Are you okay? I, I, I don't know. I'm thick and frown my asshole. Are you still on the air, Peter? No, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. My apologies. Oh. Are, are you not worried that this new system might be open to abuse? In what way? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I've got a sack to get. Can I get a little bit of help here? Please. That the older generation Please. might feel somewhat. Jesus, I lost your face, fucker. That one was massive. Right, no. This bastard, come along! The, the, sorry, the, the so, old generation might feel somewhat coerced. <laughs> coerced into spending their final days eating gourmet food and drinking fine wine and luxury spas and gardens. Look, I am perfectly capable of oh, oh, my grandmother with a rusty twat! Prime Minister, please watch your language. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Go get yourself sorted out. Right. <sighs> We're launching a government information film tonight. It should tell your viewers everything they need to know. <clears throat> they really do move at a breathless pace. It's hard to believe you have yet to be an officer. Oh, Megan. <laughs> We're only getting started. <laughs> and on that note, thank you both so much for being here. Jeremy. Right, yes, um, that's all we have time for tonight. Our thank yous go out to our guests. Um, congratulations to all the winners at the Sports World Final, and we'll see you tomorrow night at the same time. My name's Jeremy Donaldson. If you can, have a good Don't you evening. shock it. And we're out. Good job, everybody. Did I die? So they just... The same stuff. I don't suppose there's any way this could be a, a good thing. Uh, and it's my nephew, so have me transition the moment I start the leak. Uh... Okay. <laughs> well, I guess that I guess we beat it. Okay, that's fair. I, I was told there was going to be th what three. I took a chance that that last one was going to be the last one, but but yeah, no, that was that's that's so mean. I am still looking forward to finding out what like the end of this, what this is actually going to end up being. Oh, I want this. I want more of this. This was fun. Woo! That's this is pretty damn good, man. But yeah, like it. I always thought that um, what was it? Um, friggin' um, border crossing. Strotska. Why? Why can't I think of it? Passport, please. Papers, papers, please. There we go. Um, it it didn't have the 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 snappiness of like quick action. This has all the snappiness of quick action. You have to do it no matter what. Um. Whereas, like, they didn't really have that in, uh, in, in Papers, Please, or, or the Nightclub. Actually, the Nightclub one was pretty good. I, I forget what the Nightclub one was called, but the Nightclub one was pretty fun, too, as well. That one was good. But I think this, this so far is more of a demo of what the game is going to end up being. Actually, I'm not going to say demo, because they did, they did, uh, the prologue, which was a, a free. So if you want to go try this out and see if it's maybe what you want, you can go check that out. Uh, but I think this was, what, supposed to be an early access for upwards of two years, if I remember correctly? I had notes on this already. Where's my notes? 
Notes. Where are you hiding at, my notes? Not viewers, dogs. Trailer show notes will have it. Not tonight. Yeah, that's what it was. Not tonight was pretty cool. Uh, but I felt the problem that I had with not tonight is there is a ton of branching paths in not a good way. Um, and there's a lot of back and forth too on it. You know who we are. You've seen our symbols on your walls. We are the resistance. And it's time you knew the truth. What do you mean I can't say that? Advance is lying to you. How can we help you if we don't know who you are? More than all of this, he was my laughter, my confidant, my friend. The elderly are not a burden. So, mum's made the decision years. to unburden us, and now we have the chance to start a family. The membership card is an ID card, no matter what they tell you. We are getting reports of... Oh, God. Millions of deaths across the continent. Does your family deserve a nutritious life? Understand this. There is something wrong with the food. No more! I've had enough of this shit! We are not afraid. Hmm. I'm Jay, really old, and I'm Alex. <laughs> Unbelievable twat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for playing our game in Early Access. Uh, it's only through your amazing support that we can tell the awesome story that we have. If you've enjoyed it, and we really hope you have, then please tell people about it. Or maybe leave us a review on our Steam page, or come and talk to us in the discussions. It really does help, and we do read everything mm -hmm. obsessively sometimes. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much again for playing, and we'll see you, see you in, in episode, episode two! two.